Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious today with this young lady, Miss Suzanne, and please say your last name. Faita Carton. Faita Carton, there it is right there. <laughs> Faita Carton. And as you see, she's producer of ZDF Public TV in Germany. And she's she and her staff have been here for uh, almost a week to photograph the Artemis and document it. And, uh, a big part of their uh, filming has been here at the American Space Museum. So we want, we were so pleased that we could grab you today. It's been a hectic day. All yeah, right, that's all your day. days in, but welcome to the American Space Museum. Stay curious. We're honored to have uh, a, a German public TV uh, celebrity kind of here. So I am happy to be here and I thank you very much. It's really an honor for me to be with you guys who followed this history of space since such a long time to having the possibility to talk to the people who were on moon missions so long ago. It's just an historical moment and this I think it's an historical moment for me too. I really like to be here. Thanks. Well, I, we're going to ask you some questions about being here, but uh, our museum is all about people like Marty Winkle, who, yes. you, who has been one of your uh, uh, stars of your interviews, <laughs> if you will. He is. Marty called me up last night and said that, you know, get out to the Kennedy Space Center. The German crew is going to be out there and wants to get more color footage of him out there. And uh, so we did. And uh, uh, so, you know. What do you think about this is why we call people like Marty our national treasures, because the Apollo people did something that nobody has yet to do. OK, and uh, so I'm glad that you, you know, you, you, you sense that, don't you? Talking to these people. Yes, this is some sort of uh, industrial heritage. These people can tell us how this adventure went on 50 years ago and um, we have to know because when we have this enormous Artemis rocket now standing there and just not go up the first day when it's planned, we talked to Marty and Marty told us, yes, this is just normal because it's such an enormous machine. It's just the biggest rocket in the world ever built. And having this background from his experiences, your experience of you all, because this place here is just respiring space everywhere. This is really great, and we learned a lot from that, and I learned a lot from you. And, uh, boy, you interviewed uh, uh, gentlemen that were 90 years old, late 80 years old. I mean, um, I'm, I'm, to me, it smacks of maybe you've interviewed a lot of World War II people in your career, have you? Yes, but, of but course. It's like, it's, like, it's like interviewing people in Europe about World War II or, or veterans here is they live something that through nobody else has. Yes, that's right. It's not, I um, wouldn't maybe not compare them to, to war veterans. It's just uh, industrial veterans who built something very big at a time. And as space has always been developing in these years, they put in the, the screws, yeah. which are still very important today because without these people here like marty like all these people we met the the guy who is 90 years old um murphy yeah right um, murphy wardman good, no, good memory murphy no, wardman yes. one of our legends here I, you, he's you, been on you might know years. them i did yeah. it before and without these people no astronaut would have gone up that's right. It's just uh, had Bob Bob Giffen uh, hung off the side of the Saturn V rocket. Yes, that's right. Uh, mm. And uh, so all the footage that you're accumulating here's your here's your main headquarters. Tell us yeah, a little bit about uh, where ZDF will uh, just where is this building at right now here? Your headquarters. This building is in Mainz. Okay. Uh, Mainz is in the southwest middle of Germany. And um, we doing a, a 24 hours program all day with news, with films, with things like that. We're public television um, and uh, we are here because this is a worldwide um, thing to see. Um, a, a moon, a mission to moon is just something that didn't happen in the world since 50 years. And so they told us, yes, go there because it's important to see something that will have a, a real impact on mankind this time too, as it already did 50 years ago. 
Well, talking to you and getting to know you the last couple of days here, you're really affected by this. You, you really, uh, uh, you know, the throngs of people we're going to show some pictures and talk about here in a minute. Uh, Suzanne and her whole crew, uh, you got, I, I turned, I was going down route one and looked to the left and there's a film crew over there by the river and it was you guys, you know, I'm going, <laughs> man, they don't stop for supper. All right. Uh, but, uh, so what's that like to be, have you been to the USA before? Number one. And, and what's the experience like? Uh, so have you been here before? Yes, last year when where there was our German astronaut Matthias Mauer going up and I was in this region at Space Coast 2, but yeah, it's logo. I love showing show the Matthias Mauer logo. Matthias Mauer. Hello mm. there, Alex Carl, who's a ESA Capcom. We call him Capcom, he's a Eurocom. We hope to get Alex on there. And I hope that you can interview Alex someday, but uh, he brought me this. Uh, Alex, from, from, yeah, uh, Alex Carl. Okay, okay he, yeah. He's, he works for ESA. He talks to the astronauts and the. Space so we station. had an Alex. It's Alex Gerst. It's an astronaut okay. too. And uh, well, he, he's Matthias Maurer gave him that, and he gave it to me. And, and then, and then Minerva is the program that they have up right now with uh, Samantha Christopher. Yeah. So there are many Europeans in space yeah, going good, up yeah. with ESA. And uh, the the European um, Space Agency ESA is uh, in, really Im implicated too in this time with the service module European service module yes. on this mission Artemis and this is something why we're here too because it's the first time in history that a mission like that is not only done by NASA and by the Americans but there is Europe implicated and uh, this this service module was built in in or figured is, Germany has a big part in it so they do um, yeah Absolutely. they do and it's, so it's almost it is all Germany and in, some Canada yeah. And when uh, I went over to see Woody Spring, the astronaut of the day, while we were waiting on you, uh, at the, uh, your crew at the Rocket Garden, I got to see Woody Spring for a few minutes. I'll show you some pictures of that maybe tomorrow on Stay Curious. But Marty and I bumped into two uh, Dutch uh, uh, space enthusiasts that had been in our museum before, and they were proud to point out to me that the solar panels on Orion are made in the Netherlands. Yes, that's and right. And they made yeah. up in the... Uh, the uh, Airbus company yeah. makes them. Yes, in, in Airbus the did it. Yes, a German And they're French, quite proud yeah. of their solar panels. Of course. They think yeah. they're the best in the world. And we are proud you... of this so, this module. And we are proud that, in fact, if you take this service module, without this, the rocket can't go up and astronauts couldn't live in space. So it's just something crucial. And it's the first time in history that NASA um, did such an important role to uh, Europe, to, to something to, to somebody else than Americans or an American organize, uh, organization as NASA is. Well, I'm Mark Marquette here on Stay Curious. We're talking to Suzanne freitag Katran, Marty Winkle, of course, my faithful co-producer for two years here. They really worked Marty over, and I love seeing it because, like I said, these, these people don't... Uh, uh, they did it 50 years ago. We're going to try to do it again. And we love celebrating, Suzanne, on Stay Curious, space history that's happening on this yes, day in history. Right. We love talking about our shuttles. And every month I, I put together the shuttles of the month, uh, and there was nine shuttles of August. But today in space history, Stay Curious fans, uh, you'd be interested to know that uh, there's the 2ZDF. It's Channel 2, I guess, right? Yes, that's right. And it's, ZDF. Uh, yeah. Their logo is a play on Z and and the, 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 two, the two there, you yeah, see there. Right. Yeah, thank you, Marty. But for our Stay Curious watchers out there, this date in space history, August 31st, 1961, 61 years ago. All right, Jim Chamberlain, a rocket engineer for NASA who is brilliant, came up with the idea that we should put a Gemini lunar module together. All right. The lunar Gemini, here is the art of it. We talk about STEAM education that we're big with, Suzanne. Science, yes. technology, engineering, arts, and math. There's an artistic rendering. Mm -hmm. All right. See the astronaut up there in the two-man Gemini. He's got to use a rope to get down, apparently, to the, it's just the surface. Uh, that's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy, uh, yes. They were going to use, and this proposal was considered as the original Mercury Mark II. Um, open cockpit lander was also uh, there, but... Chamberlain, who, those of you that know space history, Dave, David Baker is one of the, the big historians uh, book-wise. He calls Jim Chamberlain probably one of the most brilliant men ever to work for NASA. This was his design. Look familiar to you? Yeah, Does that look at all familiar to you? Like, 
there is Elon Musk's starship wow. that we're going to land on the moon with. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. That's Orion's right. going to go to the gateway and dock with astronauts that are going to board this spaceship called the Starship to land on the moon. And I don't think that's well understood by the public. Uh, the, the Orion is not landing on the moon. It's an orbital vehicle only. At, at best, we could use it to go to... Uh, uh, but this is what they're talking about landing on the moon and Mars. But 61 years ago, yes. Jim Chamberlain had that idea. All right. And uh, Marty and I have been talking about how they're going to get the people from the top to the bottom. Or there you have an elevator that they're working on. Okay. There. So a little bit of space history today. And walking around Kennedy Space Center, you never know who you're going to run into. And uh, here we see uh, on the left, Mr. Steve Young. And on the right, Egyptian lady, Sarah Sabri. These pair ra rode together with, I think, four or five other people on the suborbital Blue Origin uh, mission about uh, two months ago. Steve Young on the left owns a restaurant called Pineapples in Ugali uh, uh, Village or, or community here on Merritt Island. I've been there. Really a cool place. It's a big yellow building. Yes, it's, uh, three stories. Yeah. Did you guys go to it? Yeah, we go. We went there and it's really nice. Yeah. And it's good food there. Good food. And, uh, and uh, I don't know much about uh, Sarah there, but except that she went to suborbital space and they love talking about it and well, I, you interviewed them yes we interviewed them because it interested us be you you have just an image of these people telling these are just crazy guys who spend a lot of money <laughs> to see something nobody ever saw but sarah um impressed us very much because she um she did uh she she does scientific um studies and she's working on research for moon um clothes to get it easier for astronauts to walk on the moon later hmm. just very very it's just uh, just amazing what she does she will she will move to the usa soon and she has really the will the will to to uh, work in space business she already does for an um how do you call it for uh She's working in space business. Right. And, yeah, you know, okay. I would just resume. An entrepreneur. Like that. Or, and, or, but uh, it's the brilliant woman. Yeah. Young. Is, uh, and I think what we what we live today is just a little bit of collision of space history and space future with Marty and um, and Sarah. Sarah will will probably be an element of space in future because she went up there with an organization non-profit organization who because she's egyptian there never was an egyptian woman in space and she represents um a part of the 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 earth they don't have human space programs in egypt mm -hmm. she just took the the possibility to go there with a the private sector because she it, it doesn't nasa doesn't take them isa doesn't take them because egypt is not in mm -hmm. so she's she it was really amazing it's her way to go well, and to great. do it hopefully she'll make an influence on that because uh, they certainly have the resources to fund a space program and uh i did i catch that she's training to go on another mission yes she wants she's she i think she's training this week to go but i don't know when exactly i i didn't capture that but uh she um it was it was uh, quite amazing how she talked about her space experience. Uh, what other, uh, uh, have you met other space tourists? Uh, no, in, not in yet. It, is, it was work? quite... Have you interviewed other space tourists of the Blue Origin that have gone up? Or... No, I just were, these were the first ones and it's, it was very interesting because you yeah. it's not so easy to find them. But I interviewed a lot of um, astronauts in the last year because we covered a little bit the um, the mission of Matthias Mauer. Mm -hmm. So we were in contact with him and the most amazing thing was that while we, we he was up there two times, he called us for an interview. Oh. So we, were, uh, we had a telephone call with the ISS, it was just quite amazing. To he have was at uh, Expedition 65 and 66. Yeah. And uh, uh, like I said, hi, hi Alex Carl. He's the, one of the Eurocoms that talked to him. And Alex told us a lot about uh, Matthias Maurer. Hope he gets to go back to space again. Like I said, Isa has Samantha Cristoforetti yes. up there, who her first mission was 250 days, I think, on yeah. an expedition. She's well experienced. Uh, hopefully, you'll get to interview her. Huh? Yeah, I, I think when she comes back, we might. We might. But actually, there are um, three European astronauts here, 
for this lounge. It's uh, the German Alexander Guest, okay. the French Thomas Pesquet, and the Italian Luca Parmitano who are around. Oh, Luca Parmitano is here. Wow. He's here too. Yes, and yeah. Isa is uh, takes. He almost their... drowned in his spacesuit. Yeah, they they um yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. and they take them here to talk about their vision of because there are people who have seen something that not many people can see so um they are quite um interesting to talk to when you have new missions they are technically excellent because they know mm -hmm. all like marty or like all these people who who work in space and um, they are here to to explain to promote, to talk about their experiences in space. And this is something which they they make uh, just some sort of, they are their ambassadors, I, I, I think. They use them as ambassadors for space when there are missions like that. Oh, and just like they do our NASA. Astronauts. Amazing guys, these astronauts, uh, really. Yeah. I'll put, uh, but I want to just share there, Steve mm. Thomas there on the left yes. uh, uh, has lived on Merritt Island since he was like 1969, I think he said, Marty. And uh, he's a local boy that made good, and uh, I think he made his money in the tech business. But I asked him what that Blue Origin felt like. I think there's another one scheduled to launch here pretty soon. And uh, he said he didn't feel a, a kick in his pants or anything. It was like an elevator. And he didn't realize how fast he was going until he saw a cloud zip by. And he thought, oh, wow. wow. So they didn't have a real sensation of liftoff speed, but he said it was smooth and quite exhilarating. And he's promised to come on Stay Curious and do a one-on-one -on -one with Marty and me sometime. As has lovely Sarah Sabri there. We might have her on Monday or Tuesday on Stay Curious. As uh, uh, at least she's walking around with my card to call me if she does. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we're here with Suzanne. And she's a producer at ZDF Public TV. Uh, so uh, give us the company line here. A, a couple, this is the headquarters in uh, yeah. uh, Germany. You said what town? Mainz, M-A-I-N-Z? Yes, Mainz, okay. near Frankfurt. And uh, so it's like uh, everybody knows about it in Germany. Tell us yes. a little about it there. That's everybody it. knows about it. It's one of the, the most important channels in Germany. There are two public channels, the first and the second. And we have some regional uh, stations too. And I work just for, for a regional station in Saarland because Germany is a federal state too. Uh -huh. And in every part of these federal states, we have a sort of a studio of the TF to cover the region. And as Matthias Maurer comes from Saarland, we covered his mission and then we stayed stick to space because we were so fascinated and um, it's something we will cover now for another at least six months to do oh, something. Good. I was going to ask you if about, you were like yeah. the space reporter for them now. Or... At the moment I am. It's huh. <laughs> a little bit because we are here and we will cover this for us for quite a time to um, just see a little bit this whole um, theme around mission to the moon mm -hmm. future of space and um in europe uh we, we 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 might see a little bit how decisions are made to because there are 22 countries in esa it's not the nasa who is representing america yeah, 22 ESA, countries yeah, in esa itself it's okay. complicated to organize it because every country has its interests and every country has to decide how many money do they put in their space program. And ESA has to say, okay, you do, you you give us this, you can put an astronaut in space, or you have machines that we will put in. It's it's quite a lot of deals, and it's not so easy to handle. And we are very curious to see um, how 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 it works. Good. So you'll be going to Cologne and. See yeah. the headquarters yeah, yeah. there where they train. And there, yes, and, that's uh, right. We uh, will do this. Yeah, uh, we've seen some. We've had some pictures of that with yeah. like our mm -hmm. friend there, Alex Carl there. Yeah. Uh, uh, what other beats have you covered before? What other interesting oh, assignments have you had? Um, I I was I have many things, so many because it's quite a lot of time that I work for them. I um I was correspondent in Paris for fifteen years. And I covered France, Spain, Portugal, and North Africa, and then in the rough, region. Rough, tough assignment. Yeah, rough, there. tough. That's very interesting. Paris for fifteen years. Yeah, wow. but I'm married to a Frenchman, and I'm French myself, so it's just something that uh, was uh, obvious in a way. And um, then where we are now, we're living on the French-German border. Mm -hmm. I live in France, but I go to work to Germany all every day 
quite curious too and uh, yeah very interesting and um I'm covering cultural heritage too over there, uh, industrial heritage with mm -hmm. the the uh, the old coal mines and steel um, factories that all closed, but these steel men and these coal uh, miners are still there. And at the time, hundreds of hundred years ago, France and Germany were two uh, two countries, but the coal mines were beside, and the frontiers didn't walk the same way so you could oh. could just cross yeah. the border beside a firm under, yeah. tunnel under the coal mines. very interesting too and yeah, you well, have yeah. these monuments and these you are the space workers they are the steel workers it's right. just uh, huh. history you can touch history there too it's quite interesting and I'm I like this very much this interesting well, I bet you report some good stories there, so. and and uh, we one we'd like to. I just like to ask you this: What should Americans out there that are watching our show uh, think about the Ukraine situation with Russia? Oh, this is very complicated. I um, it's very difficult. To say. It's just war, and it's just war. Yeah, and and if we Is it can say other no, 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 and... it's not just war. I'm, I I didn't oh, finish because it's I'm a sorry. war, and it is something. After all this history, we went through, we all of us in a world war. It's just something. Oh, and I I would say this shouldn't happen. It's just in our times when we are able to build a rocket like our team is one. Uh, this is just doesn't make sense. And I talked to um, to Luca Parmitano yesterday, an astronaut too. I asked him the same question because the space program is 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 in danger for this. Russians just told we will get out of these space programs and things like that. It's um, it's making it's a danger for everything. Lives are going away every day. It's just horrible. And he he said we saw our astronaut. Um, Samantha Cristoforetti making an uh, uh, EVA uh, with a Russian astro uh, cosmonaut. If they can do this together, why shall the world not be able to do it? And I think this is something um, Earth can learn a lot from space because it's just a question of cooperation. If you don't work together, nothing works. And this is just something it's so sad and so bitter if you see how many things are destroyed lives are in danger all the world is it's in a crisis in an energy crisis i'm just shocked and i just like to say to everybody don't make war please hmm. well there's a good european perspective there and thank you for those honest comments there because uh yeah space is the place uh for peace and harmony and the only border that should matter, like our good friend astronaut Nicole Stott says, is that thin blue line yes, that, right. that separates Absolute, our atmosphere yeah. from space. Marty, I know we got some people watching. Hope uh, uh, we've got uh, our usuals uh, uh, out there. He's going to give us a few there. We're going to okay. talk about your, fa your fans here. I was thinking Robert Law in Dundee, Scotland is uh, enjoying uh, his evening cocktail, I'm sure. Okay. Up there. Hi, Robert. He watches on YouTube. We've got Longius uh, Sane. He's in India. Okay. And uh, Dave Stange is up in Michigan. Wow. Uh, he's enjoying this, I know. Carlton Bailey uh, is a photography friend. Tom and Mark Usiak are watching. Tom was with us today. Okay, yeah, I saw him. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. You saw Tom. Uh, hi, Margo Watson. Glad that you're watching. Cynthia Rossi is another good fan out there. Uh, Keith Sewell is a good astronomy friend. And Bennett Scarborough is watching Stay Curious today. So we we're, we're, hope you all are enjoying this uh, <coughs> great conversation with Suzanne here. Uh, it was a joy to watch them work in the museum. Uh, ben Hewitt, thank you, Ben. Uh, and we're going to talk about your crew here. Yes, my crew. A little crew. bit. Let's brag about amazing uh, crew Alex uh, Marshall here. Alex is just. Uh, this is a picture I took today. Look at him posing for me. Amazing. There, huh? <laughs> Without my team, I couldn't work. I mean, they're just very important. What role is uh, uh, Mar uh, Alex? <laughs> but Alex is is fixing everybody. Alex is on his <laughs> telephone all the time. Alex is always caring about us alex comes do you have to drink do you have something to eat he's putting his phone on he makes the 
all the appointments and and he's in com because he he's uh, he's american we come from germany so we we know less well all these details of of america he has he lives in queens new yeah. york he told me and he's you've been a delight to work with alex he's we, an amazing a, guy yes we deal with a lot of these people on a regular basis uh mm -hmm. and the apollo uh 11 50th anniversary yeah. was a big thing and uh he's top notch uh very professional and ah oh, he's and very keeping, professional keeping Marty and in the just loop uh, and, uh, yeah and he's uh, he's the basis yeah. of he he's thinking of everything of everybody all the time he works Day, for cbs also he works for so. many for different channels and he's just uh yeah, I would give him the platinum medal of well, good, super, good. super producer. First time you've worked yeah. with him? Yes. And there? Mm -hmm. Good, good. But it's uh, really... And your cameraman is, is a, looks like a lot of fun, Ralph. What's yeah, Ralph, it? last What's year Ralph's we... What's Ralph's last name? Ralph, Ralph Alberti Grasso. Okay. And Ralph, Ralph, and you will see Harper later, I think, too. Um, these two colleagues were with me here in at Space Coast last year. And we we were in, in uh, we covered the launch what we missed at the at the end because it was the delayed uh, sometimes too the um, uh, crew cosmic is crew dragon yeah, yeah crew three went crew up three. Uh, after we went home oh. it was a little bit of pity but we were there for the launch <laughs> and we were um, we had many contacts so many people and uh, afterwards we said okay we are the Starfleet team and um, yeah. so that's uh, why we're here together this time. I can't wait and, to see some of his work. Yeah. I see the angles yeah. he's getting and how uh, hard he and works. You, and, and, Ralph, uh, you just you don't really see him work but afterwards you see you you discover what he's rolling yeah. it's just amazing too yeah good good amazing guy good have you worked with you said you worked with him before on yes one of yeah, yeah this and, time we, i said he knows uh, the subject and, and there's the two of you yeah. there i don't but, know i have a photo of harper too because harper is my editor and we are doing the subjects if if uh if no, I don't have ralph has rolled um i don't know I, I, but there they are working marty yeah. over there in the, in the rocket right. garden today there the, the other gentleman the cat behind there yeah did. that's that's happy and okay. Harper is the editor and he oh has, is he okay he's second cameraman too and um we are he was so laid back i didn't meet him when he they was are here, all here, laid here back the, they are really the museum. i thought he was uh, cool guy. That he's jumping in on your setup there for a minute. There. Really <laughs> uh, inspire a really uh, good team. Beautiful and, day out there at the yes, Kennedy Visitors Complex. Bit hot, uh, but, uh, uh, but we yeah. are not used to this in Germany. But it's really, it was really great, great day. Yeah. But uh, good day out there. Yeah. So we wanted to, to go in to talk a little bit about your. Uh, we're out of Space View Park. Uh, this was the mob scene <gasps> out there, this and about was this was about five in the morning before sunrise. All right, there's you on air, probably yeah. about uh, five o'clock. Sunrise was at seven, so it, it was, was deep. Just, and the rockets actually the white dot yeah, behind the white you there. Dot behind. This uh, was one of that's the, the that's the uh, uh, yeah, uh, up at the top above her head is yeah. a studio light that they had out yeah, there. This was, but uh, that's working in the trenches. It was so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It was just uh, beautiful. Uh, this morning was really, really, really beautiful because there's the people of the gym. I will never it. forget all these people around. There's you. Your beautiful. Yeah, sunrise, it was. It yeah. was amazing. This sunrise at Titusville, yeah. in front of this rocket, with all these people around, who really know what they're talking about. We had so many people around us. When we had a question, everybody could answer because just mm -hmm. everybody knew what 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 will happen or what did not happen finally. Yeah. But Marty circled the rocket on the pad yes. there to give you an idea what yes, it looks like. Right. We're, you're just ten miles away. Yeah. Uh there at the shores of it was uh, amazing. the, the uh, Indian River here in Titusville. Magic moment. Yeah, really magic. a magic moment. It was uh, it was really nice. There's uh the, another gazebo shot there and yeah. And, that, and that's that's what Never it looked like at sunrise. Is, yeah, there. it was an amazing sunrise. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I could tell you were tell, talking today about how impressed you were with it in just a moment you're never going to forget. I never forget. And no. and uh, uh, being with the space workers at that moment is just uh, great. Being with the astronauts probably too, but um, here this was something where you felt that these people have space in in their heart and in their entire life was just. Uh, was just ruled by space is I, I really love this moment and what did you think about the crowd that showed up there oh, it's uh it's it's, it's just an event which is uh worth it 
What? All the families, a lot yeah. of kids. A lot and, of kids with uh, astronaut costumes yeah. and everything. It was just crazy. And um, no, it was some sort of... was. Um, you felt some unity around this because everybody came there to see the same thing. And that was quite nice, I think. They just yeah, it was. That's a good way to put it. The unity yeah. of everybody was there. It was, yeah. uh, uh, of course, it's five in the morning, and yeah. I should have had a coffee. And they truck went there, there all that... night. It impressed me very much that, yeah. that uh, yeah. some people like Ozzy with his three to one yeah, lift, or Ozzy who is, yeah. has his radio with the Our NASA hobo, information Ozzie. all the time, and. and uh, um, people come there uh, at a special time because they want their place they already have their reserved place every time yeah. there is a lunch and um all the other people coming because this is really a big event when yeah it's at, the really big. at the same location on, a, on a spacex moment, yeah. launch there could be just right. maybe 50 people there yeah but it's uh, not the same thing and, 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 it's no. it's something that what, what but, we it, 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 but it still is some kind it's still the same thing it's yeah. a rocket leaving earth yeah and and whether there's two thousand that was there or just uh, 50 you yeah know. they're just it's something, still an yeah. awe-inspiring thing yeah right but i i have i saw too last year we were really impressed to see these new buildings of blue origin spacex and everything this mm -hmm. new space coming in and we, we we saw that now actually there is one rocket of elon musk leaving every week it's just yeah. amazing they're puff 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 it's like something <laughs> normal going up but this not no, no, this is uh, our team uh, is not a normal mission. No, this is you, something you wouldn't be here just to see Ray or Starlink launch. Yeah, there. now you can see this every day. It was quite amazing. Is just one year ago, we just said, Oh, Starlink, wow. Well, you saw the launch Saturday night. Yes, you we saw it. Yeah, yeah, where we, were you? Uh, where were you all for that? Uh, we were at the coast a little bit far away. You just we just saw it was really we didn't hear it. We just saw a little bit of this thing coming up. At uh, we were at Melbourne at that moment, okay. and near. <laughs> Near, beach, uh, were you surprised yeah. how bright it made the beach near the pineapples oh, okay. at, that, yeah. at that moment right. and so yeah there. and good. um it, it is just surprising how normal it be became in such a short lapse of time exactly how normal these yeah. rock launches you're yeah. saying have become a short absolutely it's like uh uh Marty, of course, has seen 135 shuttles launch because he worked on the engines. He saw yes. all the Saturn mm. V's launch. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a little ho-hum to him. But uh, uh, to me, I, you know, I've slept through a few now. It, it does get kind of, you're like, oh, I missed that. But, oh, well, there'll be another Oh, well, next, next week. week. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Exactly. So crazy. Now, Susan, you've been a delight to have on oh, it was a really I'm, pleasure. I'm, we're so glad this came together yeah. in less than 24 hours, folks. This is what our museum is all about. We're here preserving the birth of America's space age right here in this delivery room for Bard County and having our foreign guests here come. We we were, we all, we we want to impress them, but then we're so happy that they go back and share uh, the, the birthplace of, of the space age uh, with you there. Um, so we're gonna do it again Saturday to, uh, what is it, two, 50, what is it, 227? It's 2 o'clock, after about 2.30 Saturday. It'll be super hot. And we don't have a storm going on like we do over... Yes, we try uh, again. Days. So, uh, 217. Uh, 217. 217. So, where, where are you thinking about uh, taking the launch in? It's going to be a whole different ball game in the afternoon. But you going to go back to Space View Park? Uh, I don't know where exactly we will be. We are just figuring out where is the place to, um, because you remember last time when we were here, we wanted to do a live at three o'clock in the afternoon here. Yeah. Um, no, in the morning. In the uh, morning three yes, three, three o'clock in, in, in Germany. Yes, it's yeah. six, six hours before here. And all the telephones broke down. We didn't yeah. have contact with mines. We couldn't do our life because everybody was on their phone saying launch doesn't happen, launch doesn't happen. It was such a big thing that this time we will look for a technical support, which is a little bit stronger yeah. than what we had. News alert, you, you, <laughs> yeah. you uh, uh, Wi-Fi <laughs> providers out yeah. there. We need a, a just, power like you take amazing. out to yeah. NASCAR events and other uh, races. So we will just see. I don't know if we will be here. I would love to, but it's not sure. Sure, we'll just uh, we figure out where is the best place to, well, we'll, to share. We'll tell these. us and we'll drop a, we'll uh, tell a you, dime yeah, on you so course. people can come and probably want to meet you out yeah, there. Don't worry. To, uh, to, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No there. problem. Uh, two quick questions here. One, any disappointments? Not, not at all. Here? No. 
And America's been treating you great. Yes, all the time. Where no, it's no no disappointment at all. I just I I I would be maybe a little bit disappointed if we have to go next week to yeah. Germany again and we didn't see the rocket get up, because last time we went here it was to see Matthias Mauer get up, and we didn't. Uh -huh. They had we had a little regret, but all the time you see a launch or not, it's such a great experience with all these things that are happening around that um, we just take it as it is because space is something you cannot control and a launch happens when a launch can happen so this will say everything's safe everything's good it is just ready to go and if it's not it's not right and lives are at stake and uh, good machineries and stuff yes. like that so uh, uh that's the name of the game around here. Scrubs right, are just yeah. part of it till till it gets it right. So, uh, we're so. How about uh, any surprises here that you didn't expect? And you've been here almost. Oh, we didn't expect to meet you okay. and to have all these. Uh, no, it's you have surprises every day. Many, many, many. Because you, it's just amazing. Su it's Suzanne, amazing. what are you gonna, Suzanne? What are you gonna tell your husband and two children about? Oh, the American Space Museum. I will tell them, my husband and my children don't know if they're looking. I really want to take you here. It's it, I would uh, love to share this, but in it directly. I I talked to my husband this morning on FaceTime and I said to him, you know, I don't find the words to describe what I am seeing here. And this is just right because it's so immense, these things. Every the Kennedy Space Center, all these rockets that are there, these are original rockets. Men built them. And men like Marty built them. They were just implicated directly in all this this adventure. And I can't describe what this does. It's just amazing. All the time. Or, or every day. Every people we met were a surprise and, and a good way. Well, really interesting, yeah. Well, sometimes the lack of words says it all you know in there so uh Suzanne is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with our stay curious followers uh, but just um I, I I would like to thank you um to show us or to, to to just um share what you know your knowledge your um experiences with us we try to do something of this uh, which, which, which will share it with many other people I hope people who will see what we will do here with all these um, these uh, interviews we did with you that mm -hmm. that, that, that may be this uh, yeah yeah it's... last Thursday was a special day at the museum to have you all here and when you thank me you're thanking our whole team here yeah this our is a big team director, yeah. Karen Conklin. yeah that's right and, uh, she's used to this, this uh, these foreign crews and stuff and we're really getting yeah there are many attention. people here and that's and, it's a uh, teamwork uh, and of an immense yeah. team here all these these space workers Anita Truex has been awesome our yeah. office manager uh and and, and escorting people around and, and it's just a big team here and we're happy yeah. to do it because we know we're doing something important preserving the, the the space age its infancy and the first 60 years of it are represented here in our museum yeah and now we have these wonderful uh non-government uh, agencies involved we've got ESA involved uh and now we've got the orion spacecraft poised on the pad all right take a look at it one more time there uh everywhere we drive around we're looking over our shoulder oh, and seeing yeah. that it's still there okay we wish it wasn't but we're going to get yeah, rid of but it it's um, space well, might have Saturday, some reasons so. to this and so um jv just try another time on well, saturday well suzanne thank you very much thank it's been you. a pleasure yeah for right. me too really and yeah, uh, thanks we look a lot. forward to having yeah. uh seeing your work check it out on zdf public tv i'm sure you can find it uh, on our wonderful worldwide internet out there. Marty, we have anything to clean up over there? Nope, we're good. All right, we thank everybody who's watched our show. We're sure that you appreciate this special. Uh, anytime we can interview uh, the media and what they're doing, we love that, but the European media is just first class, so we enjoy it. So uh, tomorrow we have a wonderful interview with a young lady, uh, Delania. Yancey. She works out at space camp at the U.S. Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Wow. And uh, Delania, uh, we can't wait to have her on the show tomorrow. Okay, you're going to enjoy it a lot. 
Uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about Huntsville. Uh, she's she's young, I think under 30 years old. We've shared some of her pictures on Stay Curious that she's shared with us. And you're going to enjoy the heck out of Delaney and Yancey tomorrow. So I'm Mark Marquette and come back to see us tomorrow on Stay Curious to bridge the space between us.